Well, Screen Violence was actually a proposed band name that we didn't end up using. So we were touring in summer 2019 and trying to think about what we wanted to do next. And I found this list of the old band names and that phrase really jumped out because I thought it was something that the guys would find a lot in in terms of the aesthetic and the sounds because we all love horror movies from that era and what that looks like, what that sounds like. And I felt like there'd be something in there for me to write about that could be another layer to that meaning, that concept. And here we are. It's real. It's finished. <laughs> it's, it's here. It was pretty challenging to make this record in the beginning because Lauren and I were locked down in Los Angeles and Ian was back in Scotland. So there were obvious like log logistical issues in the beginning where we had to figure out a way to collaborate with that ocean between us, which, you know, had it been five year years ago would probably have been impossible. So mm. we're lucky that tech had moved far enough that we could even make this record. And once we got momentum and once we figured out all of that stuff, all the boring stuff, um, we were pretty functional for a long time and it, re and it really worked. And I'm proud, I'm really proud of not just putting this album out, but the way that we had to overcome all of that stuff mm. to do it, so yeah. I always like to think that each record that you put out is a snapshot of where you were at that time, emotionally, musically, creatively, what your tastes were, and I think to me this record is feels different from the other ones in terms of some of the themes and some of the sounds, but it still really feels like a church's record. And I guess that's the best thing you can say is that you try to move forward in some way. It doesn't mean that you need to go on this path specifically or this path, you have to choose your own path and then figure that out. And I'm proud of it because I can't really think of any anything that we would have done differently on it or any other people who are making records like that right now. And I think that's the nicest thing you can say <laughs> about something, you know, we did. We did what we set out to do. It's authentic. Yeah. Um, it happened in a kind of boring way, I suppose, in that our manager had emailed uh, the Cures management to see about potentially doing some shows with them next year when they start touring, if all that happens. And uh, it turns out Robert Smith emailed him back and said, hey, what do you want? And then we were just like, oh, what, what do you do, do you when you're you like want? hero, you know, asks you what you want. So yeah, we, we, had, we, we uh, got in touch with them and asked if he wanted to hear some songs and um, he listened to the sort of tunes that we had and the demos that we had. Um, and uh, he, that one song, How Not To Drown, really jumped out at him. And, uh, and we just basically said, do whatever you like. We're really keen to hear what you could bring to this song and bring to our world. And uh, yeah, we heard it and our heads just about fell off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real honour to be even a, like a small part of his musical legacy now as well. I think that's only now beginning to sink in. Mm. You know, he emailed us today, we need to email him back. He, did. he sent us a beautiful email today. Very nice um, Just wishing us the best for the album and I don't have enough good things to say about that man, <laughs> that man which is crazy considering I never thought that as such a big fan that I would ever get to speak to him, let alone like collaborate. Um, I think when it comes to professional stuff or personal stuff, I don't really like to think about things as being failures necessarily. I feel like that's something you can write into a lyric because that's what you say to yourself in your deepest, darkest <laughs> moments. But for a band especially, like I don't think when people say a record is successful or a record is not successful, I'm like, well, that depends what vantage point you're looking at it from, you know? Like, I feel like if you're talking about labels, management, sales, whatever, I suppose there is, like, a spectrum of success and failure, but I think it's weird to talk about creativity in that way. Mm. It's weird to talk about art in that way, because surely the purpose of making that art is that that's what you had to make at that time because that's what you were wanting to communicate and what you were able to create. So surely, ultimately, there isn't failures, there's just forward. I don't and, know. And in the beginning of my journey as like becoming a writer producer, uh, all I had was a series of failures, <laughs> like a failures in trying yeah. to emulate the artists that I love. Like in those failures, you discover who you are as a writer. Mm -hmm. Like in those, and failure is one word you can put on it, but every, uh, if the you process. were to, you, you could call it process too, yeah. or just experience. And 
like I, I failed so many times at ripping off so many things that I eventually found my own sound and that that became really special to me so it's an interesting word that the uh, and it's all very 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 subjective if we'd written Crimea River mm. that would have been uh, that would have been awesome. Well, <laughs> We'd be yeah. really yeah. rich. It's a really, really good song. I don't appreciate <laughs> the things that are implied by the video necessarily, yeah. which I think people in the contemporary space are a lot more annoyed at him for than they used to be. But it's an absolute banger though. That whole record really, whoever was in charge of that rebrand was like, here's how we do it guys. And they did a great job. Every time I think about going, like time travel and going back in time, I'm at, and then people always ask, what, what reason would you go back in time? Mine is always to steal the hits of all my favourite artists and release them before they do. Uh, so basically every song that we've covered is one that I would like to well, say was mine. We have more lines now, ten years in. More lines? Yes, more lines. Oh, I thought more. you meant like on the screen? No, you oh, mean no. on the face. Oh, oh the yeah. Face. Well, okay. and, yeah. and in the notebook and yeah. on, the, on the discogs, you know? That's good. I think, I feel proud of that because a lot of the time bands don't make it 10 years, mm. you know? Especially like the time period that we came out, I feel like there was just a real burst. Of, it was like SoundCloud, Hype Machine, boom. And there was loads of things that came out at that time or were really popular at that time that don't necessarily exist in the same mm. way anymore. So I'm grateful. We are really excited to be playing shows in the autumn time and We've been working hard on the show, we're making plans, because I feel like at this point people need something joyful and escapist. Even if your record is spooky and scary, it can still be a cathartic mm -hmm. experience. So I feel like that's what it will be for us, and hopefully for fans. Mm -hmm. So we're working hard, and we're going to make it good.